Hey, what's going on, my people out there in Facebook land? Um, I just wanted to uh, do a video because a lot of you guys seen me um, at church and around town and a lot of people have questions about, you know, some of them have questions on why am I still in a surgical boot? Some of them have questions on why I got the new improved scooter the knee scooter, which I give two thumbs up to anybody that's struggling with an ankle injury or surgery on their foot, I recommend it very strongly. But to get back on top topic, because I don't want to talk too long, you know, everybody says I talk too long on these things, so I didn't want to keep you guys too long. But I really need to uh, share my testimony. You know, the word of God says that we overcome by the words of our testimony, or they, but in this case, me. Um, but uh, what happened on last, I'm going to start with Saturday, and I always do this. I'm very zealous for the things of God, and a lot of times I neglect my own body, and I could just go down the list of times where I, I meant well. So I, it's, it's been days where I came when I first started at my church, Impact Church. I was serving in the uh, culinary department and it was some, some days, same foot. I would have a bandage on my foot and I'm wearing these shoes that I wasn't supposed to be wearing and I could literally feel the blood leaking into my shoe and I'm just serving I'm like God I you know you see my heart you know you see what I'm doing you see all of the service that I'm putting in and uh, and I know that you're gonna make this thing right you know but where I was in error is that I was using works as a way of trying to get my heart was good though but I, I believe at the time, and, and even from time to time, we do things um, out of what feels right and not what's scriptural. And um, so I was, and I do this time to time, like I said, I, I just, my heart was that, God, I know you see what I'm doing, so you're going to make it right. And I was, you know, skipping out on using wisdom. So make a long story short, last Saturday, me and a couple of brothers and sisters of mine, um, Benita, uh, Jared and Benita Baker and a couple others went downtown and we ministered to the homeless and um, we fed the homeless. I mean, we walked, I walked, we walked six miles that day. And when you're serving God, and I'm going to just say this, when you're doing things that are good, you will neglect all the signs that your body are telling you. And it's just, you're, you're in this life, your subject, your body is subject to the natural elements. So if you put six miles on a foot that has an open wound, again, God can make it right, which I'm going to tell you about later on. But you are exposed. You know, and, um, and, and to the to the natural uh, degradation, I should say, of the body. And um, and I did six miles on that foot with my surgical boot on. And when I got home, you know, um, I was still on high of all of the service that we did that day, and all of the smiling faces and the people that were getting ministered to, the salvations, the people that walked away, that were hungry, that got fed, and it was all in the name of Jesus. And um, I was still on high when I got home, and um, and my foot wasn't hurting at all. And I looked at the wound, I was like, wow, the wound looks good, you know, six miles on the wound, and um, got a good night's sleep. I woke up in the morning, and I told my wife, I said, man, I feel terrible. And um, I said, but you know, I was just chopping it up to just being tired from the day before. So I went, I had to serve that Sunday and I went to church and you know, I just felt weak. I was cold. I was in the sanctuary. I was freezing. Nobody could tell. Some people saw me walking a little bit slower than what I usually walk. 
And um, I went and I served, you know, um, that day. And everybody was like, Royce, you look bad, you know. And I was like, yeah, I'm having some symptoms. And I, I really do believe I've had so many infections, I can almost tell, like clockwork. I, I know they're coming. And so people were praying for me and everything. And so um, I was like, cool, 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 cool. I, I received it. I received it. But my... my uh, Wisdom was kicking in, so you need to go get seen. So I said, all right. So I got, you know, um, my brother, Minister Lamont, um, he prayed with me out in the parking lot. And he was like, you know, you use wisdom. Let's receive this healing. But well, use wisdom and go get it checked out. I was like, bet. So I went up to UF Health out by the airport. I knew what it was, you know, and, and they knew what it was. And... Um, and I'm going to move a little quick with this story, but I don't want to leave out any details. But the podiatrist immediately, when he took a look at the wound, he was like, infection, infection, infection. Everybody was like, infection. And I was trying to fight it, you know. And, um, but I knew it was a little bit more serious. So they did. Um, they ran all the tests. They did an MRI. And he was like, well, I'm going to look at the MRI. And if this turns out to be osteomyelitis, he said, you've already had one bone taken out of that foot. And that's really what osteomyelitis is. It's corrosion of the bone. It gets on the inside. Infection gets on the inside of the bone and just start corroding the bone. And it spreads through the inside of that bone. I'm guessing just natural sense saying through the marrow. You know, there's uh, protein on the inside of that marrow or blood, or a trace of blood and it just moves away and it just eats away at the bone. That's how you see people with amputations up to their knee because the corrosion got all the way up to their knee. And um, I was just fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. But just this time I felt a little different. My 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 faith was, was on a different level this time because I was just like, it doesn't really matter. If they take the, the another if they take another bone or another toe or whatever i'm gonna continue to do what i've been doing you know i was like it me and my wife were both like i have peace with whatever goes on now our faith is that we walk away unscathed but my heart was that it, it didn't matter i'm i already had another date in mind of when i was going back out to downtown to to, to minister to the homeless and i had a plan you know, I was like, if I got to go out there on a knee scooter with one foot, that's that's what I'm going to do. And um, and I and I believe when when you walk. To see the spiritual side colliding with the natural side is that your body begins to um, follow the words that you speak from your heart, of course, not from your head. And I really was sincere about it didn't matter. And I think the devil was just like, oh, man, what is this guy doing, man? This is not the same voice. Infection is not going to work this time, man. I got to find something else to do. You know, whoa, what am I going to do? Oh, God, I know his heart was hurting. And um, I was just like, hallelujah. Anyhow, you know, I was like, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know, what he tries to do. It's not going to work anymore. And the doctor came in and he said, well, you got two choices. He said, you could either, he said, I want to go in tomorrow. It was Thursday when he came in and did the irrigation. He cut open the wound, cleaned it out, took a bone biopsy. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He did that on, yeah, on Thursday. And um, he said, what I get from that biopsy, if it comes back positive for osteomyelitis, I'm going to have to take pretty much a quarter of your foot off to get that fifth metatorsal out. Now, I'm being very transparent with y'all because I'm just an open book by now. I, I mean, I've been through this stuff so many times. I'm an open book. And I believe I believe God is, is using me in this way. There's so many people in the body of Christ. And I'm, I'm jumping off a little bit. I believe this is for somebody that has things going on in their body and they hide stuff. And so you look at these young ministers that are passing away, the young pastors that are passing away at the age of 50 or 60, it's because they, they they hide in faith. And I don't see how you can hide in faith, how you can say, well, you know what, I'm not going to let my congregation, I'm not going to let people know about this and that. 
um, because I'm still in faith. I'm going to pray about this between me and my family, but I'm too ashamed to let the world know. But that was just a little, a little side nugget. But back to get back on topic, the doctor was like, um, so you got those two options. You know, you could either, if it comes back positive, I'm going to have to take the bone, another bone, I'm sorry, or the rest of the bone. No pinky toe all the way back. And I have to learn how to walk again, this, that, and the third. I was like, cool. Or if it comes back negative, we'll, con you know, we'll continue um, to do the antibiotics and, um, you know, we'll, we'll just continue on that path. I'm immediately, I'm like, either one is okay. I'm, my faith is on B. But if, God forbid, if A happens to come to pass, I'll deal with that too. So um, the next day, you know, we went in, he did the irrigation, he did this, that, and the dirt, he took the bone biopsy. Sunday, he didn't come in. Monday, he didn't come in. Tuesday, he didn't come in. Wednesday, another podiatrist came in and he said, um, let me back up. Friday came and they were like, okay, Mr. Hart, they woke me up at 6 a.m. They said, they want you to go in for surgery. You know, immediately, you know, we got to get this bone out. This day. I said, whoa, wait a minute. Where are the test results from the biopsy? And they were like, well, um, well, well let me see. They went in the computer. My, my nurse, she went in the computer. She's like, I don't see anything. Uh, the biopsy haven't come. I said, well, why are we scheduling a surgery? Well, I don't know, but they scheduled. I said, I'm not going in for a skirt surgery until I get that, uh, that biopsy back. So they canceled the surgery. The doctor came in over the weekend. I said, well, it looks like, uh, you know, I'm going to probably um, look like I'm going to probably be in the hospital over Easter. And I was like, man, that's going to be terrible. But I was still like, it doesn't matter. You know, I've spent Christmas and birthdays in here. I'll be praising Jesus on the inside of the hospital, you know, celebrating Christmas and or Easter or whatever inside. It didn't matter. So the hospitalist came in and he was like, Mr. Hart, you know, everything looks okay. Now we haven't gotten back. Um, he said, all your labs look good. Your, your white blood cell count looks good. Um, even the bone, the, the wound cultures came, but everything is coming back good. And I'm like, well, why am I still here? They said, well, so far um, the report hasn't been finished, but they haven't found anything yet. Later on went by, three o'clock came by, and um, my old doctor, Dr. Anderson, I don't know, know what the coincidence was, my old doctor comes in to give me the good news. He said, you ready to get out of here? And man, if you could, I didn't want to, you know, if you could have seen the joy that was in my heart, that God was going to get me out of this place on Saturday. Being and knowing that the doctors usually don't come in on Saturday, he was gonna get me out of the hospital on Saturday so that I could be at church on Sunday to be with my church. My wife, my sister in law was in town that weekend, and my uh, and to be with my church family on Sunday. You know, it was like man, it, it, it was it was the one of the greatest feelings in the world that I have another victory under my belt. This is just another victory under my belt and another testimony to share with individuals that, that have sickness and disease in their body is that you just got to react different, you know, and you got to have that, um, that bulldog type of faith that it doesn't matter. As long as you're in this world to get through the plan and purpose that God has for you in your life and you like you know what, God, it just really doesn't matter. Almost like when um, when Paul had, had went blind, you know, you know, um, or, or when Moses couldn't speak, you know, it was like God was like, man, it doesn't matter. It, it, it just doesn't matter as long as you're out to fulfill the plan and the will of God for your life. It, it doesn't matter. And God is going to look out for you, you know. I mean, I know that's not scriptural terms, but to anybody that's not deep into the scriptures, sometimes you have to be able to tell a person that's not in faith, the, the you know, the secular way is that he's going to look out for you. He's going to look out for you. And he's been looking out for me. And I'm just going to continue. It does. And, I, and this probably won't be the last bout. Because 
I am in a in a in a human body, you know. That um, it has a spirit and a soul, and you got to be able to ignore your human body, get an agreement with the believers, and um, and just don't be so quick when a doctor comes in to give you ba a bad report to shoot him down. These doctors are not there on assignment from the devil. Here's another side note. They're not on assignment from the devil. And actually, when my doctor told me about the, the bad report, I told him. Because I've, I've been in some arguments with that. Like, no, I'm not doing no surgery. You're not going to. My God is the healer. And I'm not going to do this. I'm not doing no dialysis. I fought the doctors for years. And I know they walked away like, boy, these people are so dumb. Some of these Christians are so stupid. And this is what they say. We're weird and spooky. And you got to, you know, you, it, it's a strategic way that we got to show our faith. And it's not really to show off. You got to use wisdom with it. And what I told them was that, Doc, I, I, I appreciate and I respect your craft. I respect and I need you. And I don't need you to work this out for me. I need you to give me that report. Because that report that you about to give me or that you gave me is what I can take back to my father which resides in heaven and I can bring that to him and, and see what he has to say about that because the word of God says that I'm healed that is the way you do it and, um, and, I, but, and, and not disrespecting the gift that's on him or his profession and my doctor and I should have mentioned this early my doctor was just like his name is Dr. Mock Kyle Mock if anybody's looking for a, a doctor that's a believer I'm gonna tell you what he said. He said, "You know what?" He had the big, he, he had a big smile. He said, "Royce, I'm a believer also." He said, "But I have to bring this stuff to you and to my patients. It's easy. It's not to discourage you." He said, "I'm not the enemy," and I was like, "I, I understand that you're not the enemy, and um, and I appreciate you for what for what you're doing." And he said, "But what I'll do is, I'm gonna say a prayer for you." And I was like, wow, man, when you can get a doctor, when you can get a doctor to join faith with yours, that's huge. Absolutely huge. And um, so make a long story short, I just left out of the doctor's office. He looked at the wound. He said, the wound looks perfect. Can I close this thing up? I said, sure. He said, we don't, he was like, it's looking so good. I don't even need to leave it open like this to let it air out and this he said so I'm gonna close it up he, he put the put the stitches in there he was like man I, I, I I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you this thing is doing excellent this just two days this is it's I'm sorry three days I just seen this uh, guy on, on Saturday three days he's already seeing him he sewed up the wound put the wrap on it commended me on getting the scooter um, so that I could offload the pressure on the foot but uh, I just that was my purpose behind doing this video is to share my testimony. Those of you who I hadn't didn't get the chance to get the long story out to, please listen to this, you know, from, from beginning to end because I skipped around a little bit, but there's some good things in this. And I'm sharing the testimony of the goodness of God so that I could be a witness to somebody that might be going through a similar situation. Like I said in earlier, I'm an open book. I mean, I, I just don't have no shame no more. After you've gone through so much trauma in your life, mentally and physically, um, you just lose that thing that's on the inside of you where you're embarrassed, you know? And I've lost that. So anyway, um, I'm going to get on with my day, and you guys be blessed. Um, I hope you guys uh, got something from out of this. I don't really, uh, I'm not going to say, I hope you enjoyed the video, but it's not about enjoyment. Um, you know, I'm just sharing a, a piece of me that I just refuse to hold on to. And I um, hope that it's a, test, uh, a testimony to you of the goodness of God and that you continue to put your faith in him and continue to serve God no matter what happens in your life. All right, God bless. Have a good day.